In this session, we'll look at a way to move a proposed parking lot design from Civil 3D to InfraWorks. As you can see, we are starting here in InfraWorks. On screen, we can see the site where the proposed parking lot will be placed. Quickly, let's jump over to Civil 3D. Here we can see the proposed parking lot design. Notice it shares the same coordinate system as the InfraWorks model. That being said, I no longer need to see my aerial photo, so here in the Geolocation tab, I'm going to turn that off. Let's zoom in. Before we get started, let's take a quick tour of this drawing. As you can see, the geometry of this parking lot was created as feature lines. These are three-dimensional line strings. These were used as proposed brake lines to define a top surface that I've called P-Lot. Just for a second, let me select that. I will go to Object Viewer. And if I tip this up, we can orbit it around, and you can see that top surface. So to move this design to InfraWorks, I'm going to do it in two stages. The first stage will be to move the surface. I'm going to do that using a LandXML file. So let's go to the Output tab. I'll choose Export to LandXML. And I don't want to export everything in this file, so I'm going to click the Uncheck All button. I will then come down and select my P-Lot surface, and I'll click OK. I will then save this into a directory on my hard drive. I'm going to keep the default name right now, and then I'll click Save. Once that surface has been exported, I can then jump back to InfraWorks, and we can drop this in. I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer to do that. I will then navigate to that same folder. I'll grab the Land XML file, and I'll drag and drop that into the model. In this case, InfraWorks recognizes that this is a terrain. I really don't have to do anything else. All I have to do is come down and choose Close and Refresh. We can then close this dialog box, and if I zoom in and orbit, you can see how that proposed surface is now sculpting the terrain over here in InfraWorks. Let's jump back to Civil 3D. The next thing I'd like to do is convert my parking lot geometry into closed polygons representing the various materials I'd like to see in InfraWorks. This would be things like pavement, concrete, and grass areas. Since I'm creating closed polygons and I'd like to export the boundary of this surface, I'm going to change its style. Let me select that. I will then go over to the Properties palette and I'm going to change its style to Border Only. That's really all I need to define a coverage area for my grading is this outer edge. Let me press Escape. To create my polygons, I am going to convert this drawing into a vanilla AutoCAD file. I'll do that by typing Export, and I'll choose Export to AutoCAD. I will then save this drawing in the same directory as the original file. Once the file has been exported, I'm going to close my original design file without saving, and then I will open the file that we just exported. Now you may find when you export a file in this way, there are some residual objects that are created from the Civil 3D content. That's all right, we'll work around them. I'm going to start by creating a shape for my grading. To do that, let me zoom in. I'll jump over to the Home tab, and then in the Layers panel, I'll use the Isolate button. And I would like to isolate this object. This is a 3D polyline that represents the boundary of that surface. If I hover, we can see the 3D polyline right there. Now, I'm going to convert this to a 2D polyline. I'll do that by selecting the Modify tab, and then I'll open the Design menu, and I'll choose Convert 3D to 2D Polylines. We'll select this object and press Enter. No need for this to be in 3D to create that coverage area. Finally, I'm going to close this up. I'll do that by selecting it. I'll go to the Properties palette, and then down here at the bottom, we'll change the Closed property to Yes. I am now ready to export this object as a shape file. We'll do that using the Map export command. Here in the dialog box, I will give my file a name. I'll call this grading boundary, and I'll click OK. The shapefile represents a polygon. I'm going to select the objects manually. I'll select this object and press Enter. I'm not going to be exporting any data in this case. Here on the Options tab, though, I am going to choose Treat Closed Polylines as Polygons, and I'll click OK. As you can see, the export was successful. Let's do another. I'll go back to the Home tab. We'll open the Layers panel, and I'll choose Layer Previous. Let's export the Pavement area next. Once again, I'm going to Isolate. I'll zoom in, and I'll select my Pavement layer and press Enter. This looks good. I just have to close up the geometry. I'm going to do that by creating a polyline. We'll close up this end. And I'll tap the spacebar to go right back into the command, and we'll close up this end. I will then convert this into a single polyline. We'll do that by going to the Modify panel, and I'll choose the Join option. I will then window this geometry, and I'll press Enter. As you can see, this is now a closed polyline. Let's export this geometry to shape. I'll do that by right-clicking, and in the Recent Input menu, I'll choose Map Export. I'm going to call this 
pavement and I'll click OK. This will also be a polygon. I'm going to select the object manually. I'll click on the pavement geometry and I'll press enter. Once again, we'll go to the options tab and I will treat the closed polylines as polygons and I'll click OK. Let's do one more. We'll take care of the curb and gutter. I'll go back to the layers panel and I'll choose layer previous. Let's zoom in. And this time I'm going to isolate the back of curb layer and I'm going to recycle my pavement geometry. In fact, let me explode this because I no longer need that as a closed shape. Likewise, I no longer need these connections, so I will select them and press delete. I will then create new connections for the curb and gutter. I'm going to create a polyline. I'll close up that end and this one, this one, and this one. Then to create the curb and gutter boundary, I'll use the join command. I'll open the modify panel and I'll choose join. I will then select this geometry and I'll press enter. Let's zoom in. Here you can see that shape that represents my curb. That's consistent in both instances. In this case, we will also export this island as it's concrete as well. To do the export, once again, we'll go back to the map export command. I'll call this curb and gutter. We'll click OK. I'm going to export this as polygons. We'll select the objects. I'm going to select this one and this one. No need to select the unnecessary geometry here in the middle. I'll select this shape as well and I'll press enter. And we will export these as closed polygons and I'll click OK. I would then follow the same workflow to export the other shapes, like the retaining wall, the sidewalks, and the pad used for the dumpster. When I'm finished exporting my shape files, I will then jump back over to InfraWorks and I will import these as coverage areas. I'll do that by bringing up Windows Explorer. I'll navigate into my folder. We'll go into the shape files directory and I'm going to bring in the grading boundary first. I'll do that by dragging and dropping into the model. I'm going to import this shape as a coverage area and then I'll come down and select a style. As you can see, I've created some custom styles ahead of time. For right now, I'm going to choose this default style and I'll click OK and then I'll choose Close and Refresh. Let's zoom out. We'll orbit and take a look. I'm sure you'll agree this isn't the perfect style for the grass area. So let me show you how you can create your own coverage style. I'm going to do that by opening the InfraWorks menu. I'll come down to the Style Palette. From here, I will select the Coverage tab. And then I'm going to select the style that we started with here. And then I'll come down and choose Duplicate. I'll make my own. I'm going to call this Custom Grass. And I'll press Enter. I will then select that custom style and I'll come down and click the pencil to edit. As you can see, a coverage style is made up of a fill style and an outline style. For the grass, I don't need the outline style, so I'll click the X to remove it. I would like to change the material for the grass. I'll do that by clicking the ellipsis button. And then in the select style dialog box, I'm going to go up to the parent folder. I'll come down to terrain and I like using this material called grass too. I'll click OK and then I'll click OK. When I'm finished, I can then drag and drop that style onto my coverage area. That looks a little bit better. Next, we'll add the pavement shape file. Once again, we'll go back to Windows Explorer. I'll jump back into that directory. We'll go to Shape Files. And we'll drag and drop in the pavement. This will also be a coverage area. And then I will select the style. This time I'm going to select the custom asphalt style that I made earlier using that same workflow. Let's click OK and close and refresh. Finally, we'll grab the curb and gutter. Let me jump back into that same directory. We'll drag that into the model. This will also be a coverage area. And I'm going to select my custom concrete style. I'll click OK and close and refresh. It's important to note that as you add the coverage areas to InfraWorks, the last one in sits on top. That being said, we can change the draw order of the coverage areas. We can do that using the Create and Manage menu here in the large InfraWorks menu. I'll just come down and choose Surface Layers. Right here we can see the coverages that we've added to this model. As an example, I'm going to select the grading boundary here and then I'll click the leftmost icon to push it to the top of the stack. I will then come down and click Apply and you will see how that coverage is now sitting on top of all the others. Let's try another. I'll click Curb and Gutter this time and I'll click the arrow to move it up one level. It's now on top and I'll come down and click Apply. Finally, to put things back the way they were, I'll select that grading coverage and I'll click the down arrow to put it beneath the pavement. And then I'll click OK. 
Let's go ahead and close up this menu and we'll close up some of these dialog boxes. So at this point, I would follow the same workflow to import and stylize my remaining shapes. When I'm finished, my model will look something like this. And then to wrap things up, I would add the rest of the accoutrements like the building, signage, landscaping, and cars. When finished, my InfraWorks model would look something like this. From this point on, as my Civil 3D design changes, I would simply swap out the affected surfaces and shape files, and I'll be right back in business over here in InfraWorks. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.